Hello there, it's Nick again with another update on our project. The last time that we worked with Mr. Pepper, we started by punching out the nodes in our bamboo using a rod and a mallet. After punching out the nodes, the insides were a bit rough, so we used a rat tail file to file down the inside of the one that was nearest to the open end, but the one further away was very hard to get to. This we kind of just had to leave until next time. We actually started working without Mr. Pepper and just sort of taking this on our own using my dad's tools in his workshop at my house. Uh, so far we've been pretty successful uh, but there were some complications that came up when we started to file out the inside of the bamboo. Uh, to get deep inside and also to save time uh, I decided that you know maybe we could stick doweling with the sandpaper tape to it as Mr. Pepper had recommended. Maybe we could attach that to an electric drill and then use that. This seemed to work fine for me. It worked great for me actually. I was able to smooth out the entire inside of my pipe. No problems. I mean it took a little while but just fine. Phil on the other hand ran into some snags and he kind of actually ran into a lot of snags his bamboo actually got a piece of, not one piece, not two pieces, but three pieces of this sort of PVC conduit that we had had attached to the electric drill actually stuck in his flute with sandpaper on it so it was just like totally impossible to get it out I don't even know how we got it out but luckily my mom who was amazing with things like that was able to get it out I am so unbelievably happy about that Last night, last night was just, oh, it was so bad. Like, I suffered, like, cuts and scars and, oh. But now, look at this thing, look at this thing. It's good to go. I can sand it, I can cut it. It's going to be great. And thank goodness for that. Once the inside was finished, I spent a bit of time smoothing out the outside, just kind of rolling it along a table, and with a piece of sandpaper on a stick, just uh, sanding down the areas that were higher than the rest until I was pretty happy with how smooth and straight the bamboo column was. At this point, I was all ready to start making holes. So, we did some uh, reading online and eventually we were able to find a schematic. Uh, in this case, he gave the references for a flute in the key of B. Uh, we didn't really want to do a one in the key of B, we thought maybe key of C would be better, but it just so happened that the diameter he specified for the key of B was the same as the diameter of our pieces of bamboo. So why argue with the guy if we're already the appropriate sized piping, why not just go with it? So we made our Schnoboy flutes in the key of B and we marked all of the references, reference points off of the schematic as to you know where each hole should be, how big each hole should be onto our bamboo and then with an electric drill used a very small bit to drill the first hole at the very center of these points. Uh, using a small bit is really helpful because it's it'll give you guidance as to where you're going in and actually when we started moving up to larger sized bits when we got to one that was uh, about maybe five millimeters wide a bit it, uh, it actually started to tear up the outsides of the hole and it wasn't very attractive. So using too large of a drill bit didn't seem to be effective or at least the drill bits we had weren't effective. Perhaps a different style of bit would have been preferable. Uh, but anyhow, once the holes were drilled, unfortunately we didn't have Mr. Pepper's kiridashi, which means angled knife. But my mom had a set of uh, German carving knives that are used in scoop wood carving and we were able to use those because it was essentially a, a very very sharp straight knife and we used those to widen the holes. If you're cutting bamboo with a sharp knife this is the technique that I've discovered works the best. Imagine that my left hand is the bamboo with its grains running vertically. If my right hand is the cutting blade and this is the edge of the blade you want to cut against to the side of the grain and scoop up. This way the very tip of the blade is actually making contact with and cutting the grains. If however you do the opposite 
and this is the bamboo and you cut down into it the very tip of the blade doesn't come into contact until you pivot enough to the side that it does at this point the bamboo is already bent to the side and a piece uh, and a strand of uh, the bamboo's grain has chipped up and you'll have splitting problems if that happens so you always want to cut in from the side instead this will cut, you'll cut it like butter, it works great and every time I've cut this way I've, I've, it's worked flawlessly if I haven't cut this way I've encountered issues with the grain splitting and there's one or two little cosmetic imperfections that I have on my flute for that reason see here there's a small little fray there doesn't look too good and on the end there's another one there had I worked the other way and just cut properly right from the start I wouldn't have had an issue but because this was as much a learning experience as, uh, as it was a making of a flute uh, that it was just a matter of me getting down that new technique for it to be successful. With that said, uh, once I had gotten the basic cutting technique it was just a matter of time and uh, slowly, I slowly worked away at it and once I was happy with the shape of the holes I took some sandpaper and just sanded down the insides of them and then I actually uh, worked through the grades of sandpaper to finish smoothing out the outside of the bamboo uh, because right along the node points there were like these really smooth areas where it sanded and then the rest of it was still a little coarse because I've just left the natural finish on there so to make it a little more homogeneous I took some 200 grit sandpaper, sanded the whole thing till it was all uh, relatively smooth and then went up to 400 to 600 grit and now the whole flute is very very smooth and it's ready to be lacquered I'll probably lacquer it today with Mr. Bud and then the next step will be to add in a stopper here next to the mouth hole uh, the stopper is to help with the tuning but I'm having a bit of a confusion about this because on our flutes we've left the end intact and on Mr. Pepper's flute he doesn't actually seem to have this stopper by the mouthpiece which leads me to believe that uh, if they were to put that stopper in that they would have hollowed out this node so that's a little uh, disappointing that uh, that might not work out quite as we had hoped but we'll see I'll, I'm going to experiment with putting it in this end and if that doesn't work then my ingenious idea is to pour hot beeswax into the end and fill it up and then that will harden and we'll have a stopper made of beeswax which should be fine as far as problems go uh, there are a few times bam uh, sandpaper got in there and and I just used like a wire to fish it out it wasn't an issue when I was making the holes uh, as I mentioned there was the snagging problem with the grain and I did chip a few spots that was a little disappointing but it I learned quickly what to do uh, to avoid that the only issue that was a major issue was the actual size of the holes and if I were to do this again I would measure and draw these how these holes out even more obsessively than I did essentially these first three holes should be the same size this hole is a little too big uh, obviously these were the last two holes I did because they're the best ones uh, this hole should be the largest but it's way too huge it should be about a millimeter larger than these holes and it's about two millimeters larger so that's an issue uh, this hole should be the same size as these, and then these two should be the smallest holes. This one's close to the right size, but this one's a little too big. So overall, the holes aren't the right size pretty much at all, and uh, I'm not even sure if they're really exactly placed uh, ideally with the schematic. So if I were to do this again, I would make a stencil, and you, with that stencil either like just brush on like with ink where the hole should be or I would uh, like make a template and just draw it on or score in the holes do something like that 
So there's actually circles drawn. Uh, with mine, I kind of just, I marked the perimeter, so I like put a little tick here and a tick here to say those were the edges of the hole, and a tick here and a tick here. And, you know, as I'm carving, I start carving this rounded area between the ticks, and if I go too far, then I, it just starts getting bigger and bigger, and then the holes got too large. So, the best thing is to just draw the holes and just be precise to them. And I think once, if I had had, if I had understood the cutting technique right from the start, I would have been able to cut those much more effectively and with much more control uh, as I did with my last two holes. The last two holes I was, I was in perfect control. These I was kind of just hacking away at it. Uh, I'm very happy with how building went. There you have it. Unfortunately, uh, with the high register, the notes kind of just sound like semitones. But from what I've read online, when I lacquer the inside, that's going to change. But here's the uh, the high register as it is now. That should have been the same scale as what I played in the low register and. Uh, according to what I've read, the fingering doesn't change for that second red octave. So hopefully that will fix itself with lacquer. Otherwise, I'll just play in the low register and be happy with that.